Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wildemar Beach Congregational Church. I'm Mary Claire Hansen. I got Logan and Lucas here with me today. Glad to have them. Always glad to have our grandsons with us. Um, please pay attention to the announcements in the bulletin this week. Our prayer list for this week for family and friends of the congregation. Please keep these people in your prayers. Um, also, pr prayer travel mercy for the Samellas that are traveling. Uh, they went to visit family in Florida, so please keep them in your prayers also. Jim and Jim Fulton, yes, who was still on the road, um, keeps sending us updates of his journeys. Right now, he's in Texas. So, um, the council meeting is tomorrow night in the living room. Um, I've already gotten some reports from people. If you still have a report, please email it to the council before tomorrow evening so it can be reviewed. Bible studies continuing in also in the living room on Wednesday evening. We had what 13 people, Pastor Ken? We had a full room. It was it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Ladies Dessert and Game Night is next Friday. Um, if you would like to attend, um, please talk to Kathy Poe. Um, please bring a dessert and a board game. There'll be tea and coffee, and uh, we'll have a speaker. Um, so please uh, consider joining us next Friday, the ladies. It is starting at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9. Um, also, uh, donations of yarn. Kathy is still looking for donations of yarn for uh, Bridgeport Rescue Mission for the ladies program there, um, if you are able to donate to that. Um, Mother's Day is coming up, Matthew reminded me. And Matthew would like suggestions from the ladies what they would like the mothers for luncheon after church that day. And he also needs some help from the other men of the church who would like to participate and help him with preparing for Mother's Day. So please see Matthew Branley if you'd like to help with that on Mother's Day, which is what day is it, Matthew? May 14th, I think? Yeah. I think it's May 14th this year. So um, lastly, I'm really behind on birthdays. I don't think I've announced one birthday this month. So these are the birthdays for April through today. Dan Tulis, one of our members who we haven't seen in a while. Jeannie Collins had a birthday. Happy birthday, Jean. Peter Murray had a birthday. Jack Cabral, his grandson, had a birthday. Blanche Arpey, who we also haven't seen in a while. Mark McAvoy. And today is Joanne Wilder's birthday. So happy birthday to everyone so far for this month. Are there any other announcements for this morning? If not, let's please prepare our hearts for worship.
Good morning. Uh, please stand uh, for our call to worship. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy array. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Let us worship the Lord together. Please join us uh, in number 272, Easter song. Join us for the prayer of invocation. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. We bow our heads to do him honor and pray that we may be worthy of him. Make us loyal in heart, steadfast in will, and faithful in service. To you shall be the praise and glory forevermore. Amen. Please be seated and join us for the prayer of confession. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we come to you confessing all our sins, those deep within our secret selves and those which we commit knowingly. We ask for your grace and pardon to make us the type of persons who will be glorious representatives of your word. Hear us now Lord, in our humble silence, as we speak only to you and seek your forgiveness. Lord God, as we gather in your name today to worship, thank you and praise you for the fact that Jesus Christ raised from the dead. As we celebrate Easter every Sunday, we especially are grateful today to know that he's risen and he's at the right hand of you. Yes, Heavenly Father, uh, soon to come again. May we be found faithful, uh, watching and working until then. Now we ask that you would uh, forgive us and cleanse us of every and all sin, and we also uh, seek a refilling of your spirit, that we might in this service worship you in ways pleasing and honoring, and lead to, leave to lead a life of service to our fellow man, especially those in the household of faith. And we pray all this in Jesus' name.
I trust you all had a very blessed Easter after we parted last Sunday. Thankful all the people that helped during Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, the egg hunt, which was huge, uh, the sunrise service, uh, the resurrection breakfast, and also, of course, the uh, worship service. So it was a, a glorious time. And I think we should clear every Sunday is Easter. Yeah. Every Sunday is Easter because it's the very day that Jesus was raised from the dead. Why Christians worship on Sunday. By the way, um, the Easter flowers that were not picked up are looking a little worse for wear here. So if you, uh, if you did donate for one of these flowers, uh, please take them today. Otherwise, they're going out. They're going out and uh, they will be uh, planted somewhere here in the church grounds. So uh, next year, uh, we'll see them come up uh, at Easter. So uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, and by the way, this uh, area right out here is one of the, uh, because of the sun, one of the first times you, where you see Easter flowers in, in like March <laughs> after uh, February. So um, Anonymous didn't show up. <laughs> Anonymous didn't show up, but now I'm starting to say, uh, who did we not see in a little while? <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple men that are missing. We won't mention their names, but we know there's a couple men that are missing. So, although one denied that he was, that he denied, one denied that he was, but uh, I'm, I'm still thinking he's a possibility. But anyway, uh, you never know. Uh, it was a lot of fun while it, was, while, while it lasted, and... Uh, I enjoyed uh, bringing my collections, and uh, when Dan gets back, he's a volunteer to count those and pass them along to, to Paula. So we continue our worship now through our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. but thine own, where the gift may be. All that we have are trust, O Lord,
Thank you to the members of the choir. That was beautiful. Today's New Testament reading is from John chapter 11, verse 1 to 16. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent the message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely, merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. The word of the Lord. Thank you, choir, and also thank you, Adrian. And uh, you'll see in a little bit why I picked John chapter 11, although it's a little bit out of sync time-wise <clears throat> for our scripture reading this morning. We're going to be talking about um, the disciple uh, Thomas. Thomas, also known as Didymus, and Didymus, uh, <coughs> the word thought to mean twin. So apparently he was a twin from that. We don't know uh, anything about the twin, whether it was an identical twin, or whether it was just, uh, you know, what's Maybe the term? Bipolar. What's that? Maybe he's bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was bipolar. Jeez. <laughs> I don't think that counts. I don't think that counts. <laughs> so, uh, disciple Thomas, apostle Thomas, from doubt to belief, from doubt to belief, Following Jesus' resurrection appearances to Mary Magdalene in the garden, he stayed near the tomb. Early Sunday morning, we distressed the exact time of that last Sunday in the sunrise service. To Peter, sometime during the day, we don't know when that was, but it's mentioned twice. And also to the two followers of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, they actually came back and then appeared with the other disciples to report that. Jesus appeared to those 10 and the other followers that were present, thought to be in the upper room, behind locked doors, behind locked doors uh, for fear of the Jewish authorities. Now, I say 10 disciples because Thomas was missing, and of course, Judas had uh, hanged himself. Jesus came and appeared to them, and in Luke and also in John, Jesus said to the disciples, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Words of comfort, comforting greeting to the sorrowing and fearful disciples as he gathered together that first 
Easter Sunday night. Jesus said this to them in Luke chapter 24. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. The nail marks in the wounds. It is I myself. Touch and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I had this. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it, would you, by the way? Because they both had joy and amazement. He said to them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. Hearing his voice, showing them his wounds, inviting them to see and touch him, and then eating something. These are all pretty convincing proofs for those who were present. However, Thomas, known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus appeared. So the other disciples, when they saw him that week, said, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord. John chapter 20, verse 24. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. I will not believe it. Stubborn unbelief. Now, if he had been present that first Sunday night, he would have been able to do just that. You know, sometimes we look around and we say, we haven't seen so-and-so for a little while. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen so-and-so for a little while. So we call him or we contact him. And I say, well, we're having some kind of difficult things and it's not going good and they're kind of, you know, whatever, set, whatever. And, you know, that's exactly when people need to be in fellowship. It's exactly when people need to be in fellowship. Be encouraged. Jesus came to encourage them. So when you're not present, you may miss a great blessing, a blessing that maybe you especially need. So now had he been present that first Sunday night, he would have been able to do just what he said. I want to put my fingers. I want to put my hand where the nail marks and where the sword was. He was missing, though. Where was he? He was somewhere in Jerusalem. We don't know where he was that week, but the other disciples ran into him, bumped into him. I have some of my best ministry, by the way, at the grocery store. Uh, it used to be it was at the mall. I, I, people would see me at the mall, and they say, you're at the mall again? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm the chaplain of the Connecticut Post Mall. You didn't know that? <laughs> chaplain of the Connecticut Post Mall, because I'd go there every time. I'd run into somebody, I hadn't seen in a little while, some other Christians, whatever, and have a word of encouragement. And sometimes you'd see somebody really down, and it was just a divine appointment. And uh, I have those, uh, I have those, I have those appointments over at, uh, over at uh, Shoprite. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> so you bump into people; it's divine appointment, and you bumped into them, and uh, you find out what's going on, and have a little chit chat with them, and uh, encourage them, say something that encourages them in the Lord. So. They ran into Thomas that week, and they said, hey, we saw the Lord. He says, unless I, unless I get to touch the nail marks and see where the sword was, I'm not believing it. I'm not believing it. But apparently it planted a thought there because a week later, when the disciples were at the house again, there in the upper room, Thomas was with them this time. Though the doors were locked again because of the Jewish and their fear of, of them. Jesus came again and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. A wonderful greeting. Shalom. And then he said to Thomas, he directly approaches Thomas. Because he, he knew what Thomas had said. And it's kind of scary, but Jesus knows, Jesus knows what we say, and Jesus knows even what we're thinking. <laughs> That's kind of scary, isn't it? Anyway, so he knows exactly how to respond to us. And this is what he said to Thomas. Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and reach out with your hand, put it on my side. Stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe. So Jesus knew exactly 
what to say to Thomas. He knew what Thomas was thinking and what Thomas most needed to hear from him. So Thomas' explanation, exclamation at that point was very clear. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. Very, very strong statement of faith. So then Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Belief, you see, leads to blessing. Belief leads to blessing. Now, those who have not seen but yet believe, that would be the millions of people down the last 2,000 years that indeed did not see, but they went on the testimony that we have in the Gospels. And they believed, and as a result of that belief, belief leads to the blessing of knowing sins forgiven, the presence of the Lord in our life, indeed peace and joy and all of that. That would include us. That would include us, along with those millions of people <coughs> down through the years. As we gathered last Sunday for the sunlight service, Sun was already up. It was, it was a sunrise, all right, S-O-N, sunrise service. And then we came together for communion, and then, of course, that wonderful resurrection breakfast. Now, the men of the church prepared abundant breakfast. I think we only ate about half of it. Uh, you took the rest over to Bethel, yes. and uh, they were grateful for it because they said they have some people that usually bring them things, but they don't bring it on Easter. So they were, they were grateful. They were grateful. So we not only fed everybody that was here, but we, we fed those folks over there at, uh, at Bethel. We're feeding again um, today. And feeding again today? <laughs> Got stuff from the day. There's from, from last Sunday, there's that much food left over. Wow. That much food, yeah. well. And we have a whole ice cream cake from Anthony. <laughs> we have, because we had two ice cream cakes. We only ate the one. We only ate the one. That was in the freezer. Maybe we ought to invest into a walk-in. Uh, <laughs> when we do the kitchen over, <laughs> walk-in. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we gathered last week in those times to celebrate the risen Lord and to worship and fellowship together. But we did so not only among the scores of people that were here last week, but along with that, the millions of people, Christians around the the world. And I always like to watch, you know, I saw one time Christmas and uh, Easter that the secular media even, you know, they, they go to Bethlehem or they go to, you know, Jerusalem and uh, they end up in Rome and maybe New York or somewhere. And so uh, maybe the local tie in, uh, you can see millions of people worshiping the risen Lord. To me, one of the real proofs of the resurrection is that. <laughs> 2,000 years afterwards, millions of people are believing and worshiping. Do you think that really would happen if the Lord wasn't alive? He wasn't indeed risen? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, belief produces the blessings of peace and joy, two things that are very much needed in our world today, are they not? But that's for believers. Not everybody believes. Not everybody believes Jesus' resurrection or that he's alive. So despite the absence of a body and an empty tomb, a tomb that was, by the way, sealed and guarded by soldiers, not everybody's convinced. Not everybody is convinced. Have you ever doubted the resurrection? Have you ever doubted the resurrection? It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. Some of the early disciples did. Not just Thomas, but especially Thomas. And to me, that's another proof because those who doubted eventually became convinced to the point that they ended up being martyred for their belief. Do you think people really would have been martyred for something that was fake news? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, yes, there were some of the disciples that doubted, especially Thomas. Now, Thomas, we're going to talk a little bit more about him now. We don't know a whole lot about him. We just know that he was one of the 12, and he was also known as Didymus, meaning twin. We have more information on some of the other disciples. For instance, like Peter and John, 
Andrew, Daniel, Matthew. Uh, we have much more information. Some years ago, in our church down in Virginia, we had a uh, Sunday school campaign. Twelve disciples. And we had uh, a bracelet for the girls and a keychain for the boys. And each Sunday they came, they got a lesson on one of those disciples, and they got a charm to put on the bracelet or the keychain. Huge. We doubled our Sunday school in that 12 weeks. Uh, later we did the Ten Commandments, and uh, that was another very successful Sunday school campaign. Uh, but, you know, some of the disciples, uh, there's a lot of information on, and some of the other disciples, there's not a lot. So it was a little challenging uh, preparing the material uh, for, for those weeks. So you basically could just need to talk about what it meant to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, and, and all of that. But then there was these other that uh, had a great deal more information. Well, Thomas, Thomas is always listed among the 12 in the list of the disciples, usually around the middle of the list, sometimes before or after Matthew, but uh, usually somewhere there in the middle. Now, there are two mentions of Thomas in the Gospel of John that I find uh, very insightful into this individual. This is one we often call Doubting Thomas. In John chapter 11, the passage that Adrian read for our New Testament reading this morning, we have the story about uh, the sisters Mary and Martha who sent word to Jesus that his friend Lazarus, who he loved, was sick. Come do something, pray, obviously. Uh, Jesus tarried. You know, a little bit later in our service, we'll have our joys and concerns, and people will share uh, things to pray about. Um, here's one of those stories where you kind of get uh, an insight into how the Lord works, because while the sisters kind of sent up a prayer, right, when he sent the message to Jesus to come, he didn't come. He tarried. And in that time, Lazarus passed away. Jesus said he's just sleeping, but he knew he was dead. But uh, sometimes the Lord doesn't answer our prayers in the way that we, uh, we pray. But we always have that disclaimer, at least in my mind, that the Lord knows what is best. And if he doesn't answer our prayer in the way that we want, he's got usually something better in mind. And if we don't understand it in this life, ultimately we will on the other side. So after... Uh, some days went by. Jesus said, okay, now we're, now we're going to go to Judea. And some of the disciples said, you really want to go there? The last time you were there, they, they, they tried to stone you. And he said, well, we're, we're going to go. Uh, Lazarus is dead, but I'm glad that for your sakes that uh, we weren't there because you, you're going to get to see something even greater, even blessing, even a greater blessing than uh, healing somebody who's sick, raising somebody from the dead. By the way, you remember when, when Lazarus was called forth? He came out in grave clothes, and Jesus had to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm losing the grave clothes. Well, you remember when they came to the empty tomb, the grave clothes of Jesus was, was laid there. It was laid there. Um, how did that happen? Well, Jesus just, just came, came out of those clothes. But when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he had to say, Un unloose him. Uh, so, as a result of that, many of the Jews and many of the people, of course, became believers in Christ. And that's what helped swell the crowds there even on Palm Sunday. But as Jesus said, you know, uh, we need to go now. Uh, I'm glad we weren't there because you're going to see a greater blessing. Uh, the disciples said, you really want to go there? You tried to stone you the last time. But then there's this Thomas. Thomas says, well, let us go that we may die with him. Let us go that we may die with him. Now, that kind of sounded like a bit of a downer to me. Do <laughs> you know anybody like that? You know, they hear some bad news and they just, oh, well, yes, you know, and just more, more bad news. Let us go also that we may die with him. That was Thomas. So the next uh, is in John chapter 14. Remember, this is like the night before Jesus is crucified. And uh, he's trying to encourage the disciples. See, things had changed from when they entered Jerusalem to the praises and the hosannas and all of that to where trouble was brewing and the disciples sensed that and they were anxious and Jesus Jesus had a message for them as well as us. Whenever we're feeling anxious and, and uh, 
fearful. Have faith in God. In particular, he said, have faith in me. That's why our, our coinage still says, in God we trust. Not in the government we trust. In God we trust. And in particular, as Christians, it's, it's in the Lord. So, now the disciples didn't want Jesus to leave them any more than we want our loved ones to leave us. But Jesus said, you know, I need to go to, I got something, I got to go prepare a place. Heaven indeed is, is a prepared place for prepared people. Not everybody's going there. But it's a place that's being prepared for us. It's large, it's new, it's beautiful. It's described for us in the book of Revelation that we're uh, studying right now on Wednesday nights. Uh, it's, it's big enough for everybody that's indeed prepared to be there for all of eternity, our home for all of eternity. Jesus is uh, preparing that place. That's what he's been doing for the last 2,000 years. Now, as beautiful as this world is, and it's been marred and affected by sin, uh, so it's not the Garden of Eden anymore, uh, but it's still a beautiful place, is it not? And we see resurrection of light, nature coming back to life every spring. Um, as we think about uh, heaven, uh, this world created Genesis in six days. Heaven, Jesus has been working on heaven for 2,000 years and described the most beautiful things that we know in this world, streets of gold, gates of pearls, all the precious gemstones, etc. I mean, it, it's, I think it's even got to smell new. You know, you get a new car, it's got that new car smell. Uh, you got a new house, new furniture. It's, you know, just like, we got a new men's room back here that's coming along. Have you, have you looked, peeked in there lately? The tiles are now done, uh, getting ready to paint. Uh, not much longer before the uh, China stuff comes in there, right? Thursday. Porcelain, oh, yeah. Thursday, okay. <laughs> And uh, lastly, the electricity things. So uh, we're going to have a, a special dedication of this coming up. So uh, the, the men's lounge. It's, it's new. It's new. Uh, we did the ladies first. And we did this over. We did the ramp. The kitchen is coming. Okay. So uh, heaven is, is being worked on even now. And I, I have to suspect that when you look at the events of the world while we're while we're given the seasons and we're given some idea of what's going to happen before the Lord's return. We don't know the, the day or the hour. Nobody knows that. Jesus said only the Father. Only the Father knows that. I suspect that uh, you know, there were certain limitations Jesus experienced uh, in the incarnate flesh that he was here or in Bethlehem. I suspect now he's back with the Father. I suspect he knows today when, when he's coming back. But certainly the Father, the Father knows that. And uh, that time is... That time is, is getting close. Um, Jesus preparing a place. And he spoke about going away to do this. He also said he's coming again. Many, many times in the New Testament. Second coming of Jesus. And, and that the second coming of Jesus is when he literally comes back to the Mount of Olives. In the same way that he left. Visibly, bodily, uh, he's going to return back to the Mount of Olives. By the way, uh, Orthodox Jews who do believe in a messianic figure, not just a messianic age, they also believe that when Messiah appears for them, when Messiah appears for us, is when Messiah returns, that it's coming back to the Mount of Olives. And that's why, if you ever noticed, there on the western slope of the Mount of Olives, all the Jewish graves that are there. And uh, one of the things you'll notice about a uh, Jewish grave, when somebody visits, they, they pick up a stone and they leave a stone there to, to indicate that a loved one or some friend visited. And the reason they do that is they say, no, not everybody can afford flowers, but everybody can pick up a stone and place it there that makes an indication that a loved one, somebody who cared about this person, visited the grave. We believe the Messiah is coming again. For the Jews, they believe Messiah is Orthodox Jews looking for actually a Messianic figure. They believe he's going to Turn and he's going to enter Jerusalem through the eastern gate. Uh, back in the 1500s, the, uh, the Turkish uh, leader uh, put the walls around Jerusalem, and uh, while there was this eastern gate, uh, to keep Messiah from entering, they blocked up the eastern gate. Now, you really think that's going to keep Messiah out of Jerusalem? A blocked up gate? I don't think so. They didn't put a grave, graveyard in front of it because, you know, Orthodox Jews didn't want anything to do with dead, dead. But uh, 
It's not going to happen. The dead are going to be raised when the Lord comes back. Believers, that is. And uh, we're going to be given new bodies, and uh, that's all going to take place. You can read about it in Thessalonians and also 1 Corinthians 15. So as Jesus talked about his need to go away, prepare this place, he also made the point he's coming again. So here's, here's this guy doubting Thomas. To me, he's more like slow Thomas. Slow to grasp or understand things. And he says, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Good question, Thomas. Glad you raised it because Jesus gave this simple answer that even a little child couldn't understand. See, Thomas, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. On another occasion, he said he's like the door. He's the entryway. He's the eternal life and the Father. So Thomas, a little slow to grasp what Jesus was saying, but he, he, he spoke up. I'm glad he did. You know, sometimes we're in a we're in a training. Clint back here, he's doing some trainings these days, all right? Instructor. What are you instructing? Learn how to teach anatomy, physiology, AP, phlebotomy. All right, all right. So people are sitting there listening to you teach away. Uh, some of you have been in classes. Uh, you remember taking uh, certain classes, you remember, and the teachers? And uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're not grasping it. You're not getting it. But you keep listening, you keep hoping that the light's going to dawn. You know, we're talking about the light dawn. And you look around the room, and it looks like everybody else seems to be getting it. So you don't, you don't want to slip up your hand and say, uh, I, I teach, could you go over that again? I, I didn't quite. Or you could go up after class, and you could say, you know, I didn't quite get understand that. You know, but for me, it was, uh, it was mathematics, chemistry, uh, balancing equations. I, I, anytime I ever got an equation balanced, it was, I think it was an accident. I don't know. <laughs> I had this chemistry teacher in high school. He guaranteed you whatever grade you got from him, you would get a grade better in college. Mr. Johnson. He was one of my mother's teachers. That's how long he was teaching. And you know, he was right. In college, I actually got a C in chemistry class. <laughs> yeah. It's actually right. And the way that happened was he was famous on giving a 20-point pop quiz on the last day of the marking period, unannounced. And twice I ended up with a 69.5. 70 was a C. He wouldn't round it up. So, you know, I said, okay, a D is a D. I'm going to earn a D. The next time I got 65s. Good, good solid Ds. All right. But in college... I did get a C. I managed to get a C in college. He was, Mr. Johnson was right. I could tell you some more stories, but I won't about Mr. Johnson in chemistry class. Uh, anyway, uh, all of us are slow to understand some things. Uh, computers, I don't, I don't get it. Now, Deborah here, she's going she's gonna to work at it till she figures it out. I don't have that kind of patience. I just going to, I don't know something. I know a guy that does know. That's the thing. I, there's a lot of things I don't know. But I, I know a lot of guys. And so what I don't know, that doesn't bother me. I, I don't mind problem asking somebody, you know. You know, Rumsfeld says, you know, it's things that we know, the things that we don't know, it's the stuff that we don't know that we don't know that's really the problem, right? Anyway, uh, Thomas, at least to his credit, he slipped up his hand and said, Lord, we don't know what you're talking about. And I often say this when I do uh, funerals. I'm glad that Thomas wasn't ashamed to wasn't afraid of what somebody, what's the matter with you? You didn't understand that? He's a little slow. You know. uh, didn't keep him from asking because Jesus gave him this simple, direct answer that even a little child could understand. Thomas, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I'm glad that Thomas, while he might have been a little slow, might have been a little pessimistic, might have been a little bit negative, he uh, didn't mind expressing his ignorance. And as a result of that, Jesus gave this answer that uh, was greatly a blessing to him, as well as, of course, many others. We call him Doubting Thomas. Many of us can identify either in that way or, or we know somebody that fits into that category. Now, Thomas eventually did come to believe, my Lord and my God. And it is believed that Thomas eventually ended up in India. 
and some think he was taken there as a slave, but he ended up in India and uh, planted the church that's still there in India. Uh, there's a number of, uh, you, know, you got uh, Hindus and you got Buddhists, and uh, there's a small percentage of Indians that are Christians, especially in the uh, southern part of India. And on my trip to India back in the 80s, we visited the cathedral there, and you go down below. They actually have, they claim, it's a little bit morbid, but they claim they have a part of Thomas's body uh, as a relic. They really believe this and get the cathedral there. Uh, but a real proof of it is the number of Indians with the name of, of Thomas. Uh, I had a friend that was, uh, came to Yale, and he was a pastor. Thomas Matthew. Thomas Matthew. Uh, our dentist, we had a dentist that had, Thomas was in his name. So a lot of Indians have the name Thomas. Uh, so that's indication of the fact that he did become a believer, was convinced, as with the other disciples, uh, ended up being martyred, but he planted the church that's there in India this day. So Jesus said this regarding doubt and belief. You remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking in the parables and we were going about the fig trees, we also pointed out that uh, when Jesus was hungry, he went over to this fig tree, he didn't find anything on it. He cursed the fig tree, and the next day the thing would wither. It, like these, <laughs> these things wither. Anyway, the fig, tree, the fig tree withered, and the disciples were like, wow. Look at that, look at that, Rabbi. You cursed that tree, and the thing withered. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you, when Jesus cursed something. It, it you know, had an effect, his words. So Jesus said this to the disciples after the fig tree withered. He said, I tell you the truth. If any of you have faith and do not doubt, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you say what was done to this fig tree, but you can also say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. You can also say and do what I did to the fig tree. Go to this mountain, throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. And if you believe, you will receive. If you believe, you will receive whatever you asked for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever you asked for in prayer. Doubt, the belief, and the blessings of answered prayer. Now, the book of James, written, we believe, by Brother of the Lord, had this also to say about doubt and belief in James chapter 1. <clears throat> And I like this verse. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. And there's been many times in my years of ministry and service where I needed wisdom beyond what my ability was or my training. And so I remember this verse. And so, Lord, you, you promise if anyone lacks wisdom, and I'm lacking wisdom here, I need some wisdom. If you indeed ask God, he will give it to you generously without finding fault. It will be given to him. But when he asks, whoever it is that asks, he must believe and not doubt. He must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unable and unstable in all that he does. That person who doesn't believe, who does doubt, remains in doubt, doesn't believe, is like a double-minded person. They doubt, believe, they don't believe, they doubt, they're not sure, and back and forth like the winds, the waves. And he says, that person can't expect to get an answer to prayer. But a person indeed does not doubt, but does believe, prays and asks, he will indeed receive. That's what the Lord said. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So Thomas, I'm glad that Thomas was who he was because there's a lot of us can identify with him. If not today, sometime maybe in the past, or we know somebody. And the humanness of Thomas is to me uh, a real proof indeed that the resurrection did take place because 
those who doubted, like Thomas, became convinced. They became convinced because of things that certainly were very true and real to them. And the Lord made that clear to them. And they were convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt. And they were then able to go and tell others. And based upon the telling others, in the presence of the Holy Spirit accompanying their words, many others came to believe. They told somebody who told somebody who told somebody. 2,000 years later, somebody told us. And that's why we're here. Believe conquers doubt. Believe and you will receive. Thomas is a good example of how doubt can be changed into belief. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Lord, we're grateful for the disciple Thomas, who indeed was able to overcome his doubt and came to firm belief and became an apostle, one who indeed spread the good news that Jesus came back to life and is living today and is going to return from where he's preparing that place for us in heaven. We're thankful for Thomas. Help us in our own periods of, uh, of doubt to be reminded of this and other passages in your word to strengthen us in our faith. We live in very difficult and challenging times. Very difficult and challenging times. Many different things that confront us in this life. We need indeed faith to get us through. And faith that gives us indeed joy and peace. Thankful that indeed through belief we can receive these blessings. And thankful for life and the testimony of Thomas. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, for the kingdom's sake. Now before our joys and concerns, our hymn is number 281. 281 is, Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Let us sing this victoriously. 281. <laughs>
Thank you, Goodson. Please be seated. This is the time for the joys and concerns. Anyone? You're first. <laughs> it is a joy to be here with you all. Good morning. I think you'll notice my partner's not with me today. It's like the two of us are together. <laughs> Um, but we had a little incident with Ellie last night. I had to call 911 for her. Um, fortunately, it turned out to be nothing more than uh, vertigo. They did take her to Milford Hospital and checked her all out. I think her pressure was going all over the place, but that I think was probably anxiety. Mm -hmm. But she's home and resting today, so she's home. But keep her in your prayers, please. Just a, an update on Bridgeport Rescue Mission. Um, we, are, we have so many people coming in for the pantry. But on Wednesday, we had a, um, a ceremony from the new, the, the new life classes. We had nine women and ten men graduate from the new life classes. And every time they stepped up to get their plaque, they all said, I know where I've been and I'm not going back. Amen. Of nine women and ten men. Some of them are going to be moving on, and some of them are going to be staying for a while until they can, you know, get their get their stuff together. That's wonderful work. Just want to remind everybody to keep Tom Francoeur in your prayers too. He just had knee replacement surgery a week ago Friday. I don't see him here today, so I'm sure he's still recovering. Um, and hopefully he's listening to the doctors just like Anthony did. Right, Anthony? <laughs> so um, to, just prayers for Tom. Anthony. Um, just want to thank the church members for praying for me toward my healing. Um, the uh, progress has been going very well. Yes, I tried to pay attention to the doctors. Um, as of right now, my hip is not the issue. It's now my left knee because I'm finding out I'm pushing myself a little bit too much. But that's okay. Um, I'm grateful to be here serving our members. Um, I'd also ask for prayers for Glenn Wormy, who's still dealing with health issues. Um, Chris Matola, one of my best friends, who's dealing with family issues. And Al Kelly. Um, who's traveling back and forth to New Jersey. Another one of my best friends that um, travels back and forth to New Jersey to work as a uh, electrical engineer. Thank you. Anyone else? Matthew? I just want to pray for um, safety on the road. Just, you know, it's getting challenging. I'm watching. I, I, I gotta give some of these drivers credit. What they'll try. I mean, a car length. I, I saw this one the other day. I'm like, I don't believe it. You know, a car length. That's it. And he's doing. I'm in the middle lane. He's in the far left one, doing 90. Jumps in the spot in front of me, car length, and then chooses to go to the first thing. I'm like, you belong in a speed track, man. I'm like, it, it, it's amazing, you know, to me that, you know, there are many more accidents. But I just pray for safety on the road. That's, you know what I mean, for all of us. It, it's getting, you know, make sure you're aware when you're on that highway or wherever you are. Keep your faculties straight, you know. Don't get caught up with your phone or whatever else can distract you. I said, there, there are these people up there. They're challenging, so just, you know, real, you know, safety on the road for everybody. Amen. Yeah, they apparently didn't get that class that allow one car length for every 10 miles. <laughs> they, they didn't get that class. I see it all the time. You know, you, you slow down, you give that, end up somebody's right in front of you. Have you noticed the, the number of cars 
be still being driven with a lot of body damage on them? Well, you know where that comes from. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just keep going. But uh, absolutely, I pray for safety on the highway. And uh, Jim Fulton, our yes. member who's now out, I guess, in Texas, he's been visiting a lot of interesting places, Hot Springs, Mammoth Cave. Amarillo, so, Texas right now. Yes, Amarillo, Texas. So <laughs> he's going to be doing another uh, talk uh, when he gets back. Uh, so we'll have an adult fellowship. So we're looking forward to that. Joanne didn't make this trip with me, okay, but uh, I'm sure she's reading the updates uh, as, as well. Um, one of the prayer requests this week was from Verna about her son, grandson, uh, little, little Joseph, uh, who had a very, very high fever, 104 something, uh, and it's thought as maybe it was the adenoids or uh, tonsils, some other little infection going on. So he was here for the egg hunt. Uh, <laughs> But uh, then he came down with it. So pray for little Joseph that uh, they would get on top of whatever it is that's, uh, that's giving him these bouts of fever. Let us pray. Lord, we, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, that uh, we're not informing you about something. You know about these things, but yet you invite us to pray and you command us to pray. Because when we pray, uh, we're expressing our faith in you, uh, that you can indeed do something, make a difference, bring your awesome power to bear on these matters. So we pray for these individuals that we just mentioned and for any other concerns that uh, are in our hearts this morning uh, that weren't shared. We continue to pray for cessation, today being Orthodox Easter. We think of the people in Ukraine. Uh, we pray for end of hostilities there and for some uh, conclusion to that uh, horrible war that Thank you for um, the work that's being done in helping them, the Samaritan's Purse, as well as earthquakes and all the tornadoes, etc. So we're thankful for the privilege of prayer, knowing you as our Heavenly Father. And we now close by praying the way your son taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for now and forever. Amen. Our parting hymn, just verse 1, number 285. 285, he lives, he lives as we stand together and sing this note of Father, we thank you for that. Pray now as we go forth in the power of the risen Christ that we may bear witness indeed that Jesus lives and the difference that he makes in lives including ours. And we thank you for this in Christ's name. Amen. Now I invite you to join us our time of fellowship in the fellowship hall if you're able to stay. See you there.